Welcome to episode 73 of New Hampshire Knits, a knitting podcast coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire, where our state motto is knit free or die. Today is Friday, February 16th, 2018, and I'm your host, Claire. New Hampshire Knits is proudly sponsored by TheWoollyThistle.com. The Woolly Thistle brings the best of British yarns to us here in the United States and also has a growing Scandinavian feel to it as well. Rama Finnelgarn just arrived and you're already showing your love for it. This yarn is from Norway and is 100% Norwegian from sheep to mill. The resulting yarn is strong, soft, colorful with natural shades too and is perfect for color work projects, knitting garments for kids or adults. Available in 50 gram balls, this is a fingering weight yarn with over 40 shades already available at the Woolly Thistle, with more coming soon. Thank you for the splendid reception you have given Rama Funulgarn at the Woolly Thistle. Let the Woolly Thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thank you, new and returning listeners. Uh, Welcome to episode 73. It's going to be a full one and we'll just keep going. Edinburgh Yarn Festival is coming up. I'm very excited as this gets closer and closer. Fibertrek Sarah and I will be there on Friday and Saturday. So please do say hello if you recognize us. We'll be at the Meet the Podcaster event on Friday and Saturday, which I think is between 12 and 2. And yeah, Edinburgh Yarn Festival has so many good things planned. Lucky enough that we're getting to... Uh, attend Kate Davis's talk on her latest book that's coming out and we also snagged some tickets for the Kaylee and so very excited never mind all the vendors I can't wait to get to uh, go meet a bunch of vendors I'm really looking forward to this event it's going to be a whirlwind trip but it's going to be great and of course Blacker Yarns is the host of the podcast lounge and we'll talk more about the Blacker Podcal in a minute So let's get started, shall we? This episode includes On the Needles, Off the Needles, New Hampshire Knits Mitten Cal, The Blacker Pod Cal, There's No Coopcast This Week, then we'll have the Woolly Thistle update, and we'll wrap it up. So On the Needles right now, I have the Siri Cardigan by Linne Ullman, and this is what I'm knitting for The Blacker Pod Cal. Um, Are you joining in? There's a Ravelry thread in the New Hampshire Knits group which you're welcome to join and uh, tell us what you're knitting. The only requirement of the Blacker Podcal is that you use Blacker yarns. You can knit anything you like. So I chose the Siri cardigan and I'm knitting it using the birthday blend this year, which is the brushwork. And I'm using the Velatura color, which is a, the lovely blue. This yarn is really nice to knit with. I'm really enjoying it. It's got a nice spongy quality to it. And the Linné cardigan has uh, lots of textured knitting uh, in the yoke. It's a yoked cardigan and it's top down. And I think the last time we spoke, I had finished the yoke and had divided for the arms and was knitting the body. But shortly after I did that, I tried it on and found that I thought the yoke or the arm holes were too high up. I needed more distance between between where you know you split for the arms so I ripped that back put everything back on the needles and continued to knit the yoke uh, a few more maybe an inch and a half more and then I divided for the arms and then I started knitting around and that was good and I probably knit a couple of inches before I tried it on again (laughs) only to find that I'd miscounted my stitches and had put an armhole where it should be and then put the other armhole way off so when I tried it on I had this asymmetrical (laughs) cardigan happening and I 
I couldn't figure it out at first. I'm like, why does this bit look longer than this bit? And why? Well, yeah. So I had to rip back again. But at least I knew now that um, lengthwise I was on the right track. So yes, I ripped back and then I counted everything, double checked that I had the right stitch counts for the fronts and the back and, uh, and got knitting. And I've been knitting back and forth. I think I talked last week or last time about how I could knit this in the round and stick it. And actually, Ellie of Skein Deer I saw is knitting the same cardigan. And she decided to knit hers in the round and stick it. But I decided that I wanted to knit this back and forth because I'm sick of avoiding purling. I guess I really, you know, I could have sticked it and I'm happy to do that. But I wanted to practice my purling. And Emily of Fiber Town suggested I try Portuguese purling. And I did. I put the yarn around my neck. And it actually is a good way of purling. It's much easier. Once you get the tensioning right, and, you know, I watched a couple of YouTube videos to figure it out. It was good. But it wasn't something I felt I wanted to do. Because when I finished purling, then I wanted to knit back continental. And then I would purl a row of Portuguese style. So I was... I was doing a lot of work with, you know, the yarn is on my left when I knit continental, but I wanted it to come up and around to the right around my neck when I was knitting Portuguese style. So this wasn't the best solution. And also I found it a lot of work on my thumb and being the old lady that I am, I'm getting uh, arthritis in my thumbs these days. So I find that too much work on my thumb. So I decided no. Let's just do what we started out to do, which was to practice our continental purling. And I went back to that. And actually, you know, through repetition and just doing it, it's getting almost as fast as my knitting in continental because I've done so much of it now. So I'm a great believer in picking a project and making yourself do it, you know, learning that new technique. And maybe uh, in the future, I will find a project that I want to learn how to knit in Portuguese style. I think that's a little more difficult than purling in Portuguese style, funnily enough. But I'm a great believer in picking a project. And whenever you knit on that project, you knit in that new style, which means you can go back to another project and knit it however you want to, whatever you're comfortable with. But when you pick up that other project, it's a knitting technique project. That's how I learned to knit continental. I grew up knitting uh, in the English style, though I would never have called it that. <laughs> I thought it was the only way to knit. I had no idea that there was other ways of knitting. And uh, so when I learned about continental knitting and that it was actually a lot faster than how I was knitting, I was really intrigued. And I got a very basic vanilla mitten pattern that I wanted to knit. And that project became my continental knitting project so that every time I picked it up, I would knit it continental and it was knit in the round. So I was just learning to knit in continental there. But by the end of that project, I could knit continental and, you know, I could knit well continentally. So it works for me to pick a project and make that be the thing. And that was a good couple of years ago now, probably. And here I am just deciding to figure out how to get my speed up and my comfort level up knitting or purling in continental. I've always been able to do it. I mean, you have to be able to purl at continental if you're going to knit continental. Um, and uh, I find that I love uh, knitting ribbed or even twisted rib continental style. I mean, ribbing used to be a real pain in the neck when you were knitting in the English style. There's so much back and forth and, ugh. you know, whereas with continental, it's very quick. It's just a flick of the finger. So, yes, so the Siri cardigan, I finished the body. I did a little waist shaping that I put in and I'm keeping it quite short, finishing just above the hips. It was knit back and forth with lots of purling. And now I'm adding on the first sleeve and I get to knit that in the round. <laughs> and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And actually, I just got some new high high sharps in and I've got lots of different sizes of the nine inch needles. And selfishly, the reason I did that is because I want to try knitting the sleeves on nine inch needles. I get a little tired of the magic loop, I gotta say. Ugh. 
So I thought, well, I'll get some nine inch needles and I've not used them for socks. I've never used them. And I know that they're very short to handle, but I would like to see if I could just go round and round and round and round on a very small needle. And that might speed up my um, knitting of the sleeves. So I think we've got about five weeks to go before Edinburgh Yarn Festival. This sweater's for that and I'm I'm in plenty of time to finish it. I'm not worried, but I'm going to keep on. That is my main project right now. The title sweater is now my car knitting where I used to knit socks in the car. I'm knitting a sweater. <laughs> I am actually missing knitting socks and I'm missing the sock FO. I'm a little tired of my sock collection and I would really love some more rustic wooly socks in my collection. So I know that socks are going to come back, but for now it's all about sweaters. So the title sweater this is a very simple sweater. It's my third title sweater in one variation of an, or another, knitted in Tidal Yarns, uh, who is out of Connecticut. And this is on a US 5. And I finished the body. I'm just casting off the body now. So I've got two sweaters where the bodies are done. That's pretty good. And I'm going to um, attach the sleeve next. And and then it'll be like knitting a sock. I'll just be knitting a sleeve. And again, if I like the nine inch needles, I might transfer that over to that sweater as well. And then I had a cast on uh, since we last spoke. I cast on the Radari sweater by Venice John's daughter in uh, Let Lopi. And this, of course, is the classic uh, Lopi sweater. And I'm knitting this for Jay. I've knit him plenty of socks well, not really plenty, a few pairs of socks. And uh, I've been wanting to knit him a sweater since last year. It's actually his 50th birthday as I record this. And for his 50th, he's getting a sleeve. <laughs> I've knit one sleeve. And the second one is maybe a third way done. And then I'll do the body after. And uh, I printed off the pattern and, you know, it starts with the cuff. Well, it starts with the body, but I went straight to the sleeves and it starts with the cuff of the sleeve and a little bit of color work and then up you go. I, I did it and I like the color work and it looked nice. I'm doing this all in grays, different shades of gray and let lopi. And then I was showing him the sweater and he's liking it. I think he's a little nervous of just how much color work is up around the yoke, but Oh, well. And uh, so I was showing him on Ravelry some of the other uh, Radaris that have been knitted. And while I was looking at them, I noticed they all had more color work at the cuff than I do. And I'm like, I'm looking at the pattern. I'm like, how are they all getting this extra color work? I have did what's there and I've only got this. I mean, it looks nice, but it doesn't look the same. And so I looked the pattern up online again and looked at the chart and sure enough, my printer had cut off half the color work chart on the cuff. <laughs> it was down at the bottom of the page. So I'd already almost finished one sleeve at that point. Jay decided he liked it like that because it wasn't, you know, as colorful or as, you know, uh, intricate. So we're going with that. We're going to have small cuff details on his radari. Oh, and in case you haven't noticed yet, I do have a cold right now and I apologize. Uh, today, I'm feeling much better than I did over the last couple of days. This has been one of the worst colds I've had in years. But today I'm feeling much better. So I wanted to get the podcast out to you. So my apologies for my nasal sound. I hope you can bear with it. I'm still fantasy knitting an arboreal or a fern and feather in Plotolopi by Jen Steingass, who is knit.love.wool on Instagram. Um, it's just beautiful. And uh, I love Plotolopi. So those sweaters in that is definitely in my future. And also, I think it's called the Stockbridge Cardigan by Isolde Teague that came out recently in Tuku Wool. That is just such a good wardrobe staple cardigan. And I know that she's joked that it's a boring cardigan, but everybody needs a boring cardigan in their wardrobe. And it's not boring at all. It's very beautiful. But it is a classic uh, vanilla type cardigan. And I actually really enjoy those kinds of projects. I love stocking it. I could knit that forever. Um, so that is definitely in my future knitting plans, along with the um, the vest that she was that she has too. 
the Cruden vest. That's a colour work vest. That is still on my radar too. Okay, so off the needles. I just have a little project to share off the needles and that is the Randy slippers. Last time I called them the Elsie slippers or the Elsa slippers and I, I actually was calling them by the wrong name. That's a different pattern. These are the Randy slippers and they're from the ebook Norse Knits by Kristen Drysdale, who is Scandi Work on Instagram. She just opened up a new Ravelry group too called Scandi Workers, which I think is well worth joining if you like color work. She is an excellent designer and a very nice person. She has donated her ebook Norse Knits as a prize for the New Hampshire Knits Mitten Cal coming up, so stay tuned for details. I knit these uh, slippers as a gift and I'll post photos of them soon. Uh, I did them in West Yorkshire Spinners Air Valley DK in a red and cream. So these are very Scandinavian design, just two colors. This yarn's great. There's no pilling. There is 25% nylon in them, so they're good and tough and perfect for slipper wearing. And I've just given them their bath in the washing machine and they came out fine. They're drying and once they're dry, I will weave in the ends and snip everything and package them up. So that's all that's off the needles right now. Lots of big projects going on. I am actually getting quite a bit of knitting in for the most part, which is good. So mark your calendars. New Hampshire Knits Mitt and Cal 2018 starts February 28th and goes through April 15th. That's approximately six weeks, in which time you can knit a pair or two of colorwork mittens. Go to the New Hampshire Knits Ravelry group to find out details of designer discounts, price information, and the cowl rules. The Woolly Thistle is offering 10% off select yarns that are perfect for colorwork mittens, including Jameson and Smith, West Yorkshire Spinners, Tuku Wool, and some blacker yarns, to name a few. You're not limited to knitting mittens with your purchase, of course. Just use the NHK Mitten Cal 2018 discount code at checkout and you can get 10% off. You're not being held to knit any specific designer's mittens either. It's just that these designers are on board and have provided prizes and discounts on their mittens designs. So it's great to look them up first. So go to the New Hampshire Knits Ravelry group for those discounts. Last year, Patricia, who is P4Chen on Instagram and Ravelry, offered a cast on prize and she's doing it again this year. You must have seen by now her beautiful handmade blockers, her Selbu mitten blockers. They're made from trees on her farm and she has hand sanded them. They're just lovely and I have mine coming in the mail. She's offering a pair of these as the cast on prize. So on 228, once you've posted your photo of your cast on and told us what you're going to be knitting, I will draw uh, for a winner of everybody who has cast on that day. These mitten blockers are really beautiful and made with love. So head over to Instagram for details on how to order your own set and definitely cast on your mittens on February 28th to be in the running to win. This is a really fun cal in its third year with great participation every year. Each of us help each other and cheer each other on. And sometimes uh, some people even manage to squeak out a couple of pairs of mittens during the time. All the details are on the Ravelry group. And you can also tag your photos on Instagram with hashtag NHK Mitten Cal 2018. The Blacker Podcal. This is just a reminder that we have our own thread on the Wooly Thistles Ravelry group for the Blacker Podcal. My Siri cardigan and brushwork is my entry. You don't have to be going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival to participate. You just need to knit something using blacker yarns. There's plenty of time yet to get involved. Check out the Ravelry group on the Woolly Thistle, as well as Blacker Yarns Ravelry group for details on how to participate. It's easy and fun, and we don't even need an excuse to knit with Blacker Yarns, do we? So be in the running for a prize, you might as well. I wanted to give the new podcast a shout out. I know many of you have found it already. This is Tightly Spun by Butterfly M4, who is Emily, and she is interviewing everyday knitters and crafters. I just loved the concept, thought it was a brilliant idea, 
and I'm actually sponsoring the podcast for a little while. So give a listen to Tightly Spun. You can find it on iTunes and everywhere that podcasts can be found. So now it's time for the Wooly Thistle update. As always, the shop is doing great. Join the Ravelry group for the Wooly Thistle for updates of new yarns and books coming to the shop. As you know, we just got Rama Finulgarn in the shop, which is 100% Norwegian. So now we're representing Norway with Finulgarn, uh, Finland with Tuku Wool, and Iceland with Lopi. It's great. Imp- it's an impressive yarn in beautiful colors. The natural shades are really great too. I opened up with over 40 shades and they've all done really well. I have more going in and in fact by the time you hear this I may well have everything in the shop. So keep checking back. I'm still taking pre-orders for Len 4. I have lots of supply. The original date for release was February 20th. I believe they'll just be getting into the States on February 20th. So I think it'll be a few days after that before I can get them out to you. They're coming into a central location in the States and then I'll receive my copies from them. So there is a delay, but I think it's more on the printing side of things and that has pushed back everybody's dates. So it's the same for everybody. I'm taking pre-orders. Lots of you have pre-ordered and that's the best way to secure your copy to ensure that you get yours I know that I would say this, but I actually believe it. I think this issue is going to be the best one yet. There is a sweater in there that I am definitely wanting to knit. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a very lovely, lacy, lightweight sweater that is calling my name. I've also seen in there uh, a photo of uh, Melody, who is B Mandarines on Instagram. I'm sure you know her. She has a pattern in there for a shawl in Plotolopi. And I got very excited when I realized that. And I've been in touch with her. And I now have all the shades that are in this huge Plotolopi shawl. And my big plan is to make kits so that you can knit a Plotolopi shawl with uh, Melody's pattern that's in Len 4. So I'll be working hard on those. I've got the colors um, ordered. And of course, in true Melody style, these are beautiful, neutral, soft shades. And uh, I'll see what I can add to make it a lovely kit for you to knit the shawl. And maybe that could be our Plotolopi along. I've been kind of wanting to do another along using Plotolopi. Last time we had the Rusty cardigan and that was such a great cow, wasn't it? And most of us used Plotolopi for that because that's what the pattern called for. So um, maybe we'll do it this time with a beautiful shawl. I think that's a great idea. I'm full of great ideas. <laughs> Blacker Samite is as fully stocked as possible now. So if you're in the market for some gorgeous Samite, you can get what's available now. Um, there's a couple of shades that are out of stock at Blacker. But everything else that is in stock, I was able to get. More St. Kilda is coming and may well be in stock by the time you hear this. Also uh, on its way right now and probably in stock by the time you hear this is Blacker Mohair. Lots of you have been waiting for this patiently and it's on its way. I'm going to have all the colors. I hopefully will have enough supply of each color for you. And of course, this is the yarn that will make really nice, strong, natural, nylon-less socks as well as garments. I'm hoping that this will uh, jump start me into some sock knitting. Oh we had the brushwork come and go in a flash so sorry if you missed out on that. Hopefully if you wanted some you got some. The tuku is well stocked in both fingering and sock weights and there's lots and lots and lots of the knitting goddess here. As of right now, while I record, it's not in the shop yet, but it may well be in by the time I publish this podcast. I have lots and lots of her mini rainbow sets. Those were really popular. Brit Sock is lovely, soft sock yarn, but you can also use it for garments and shawls. It's very soft, but it does have nylon in it, giving it that bit of strength. Her One Farm yarn was hugely popular last time, so I have lots more of that. And her BFL Nylon Blend, which is a really good sock yarn, is also back in stock. 
Coming soon is a hand dyer's yarn from North England. This is Black Elephant. Black Elephant is a wonderful dyer. She does fantastic work and I really, really like her yarn. This is a bit of a departure for the Woolly Thistle in that there is super wash merino in here. It's kind of a guilty pleasure in a way. But I decided I would test you guys out, see if you had any interest in this kind of yarn. She is based in the north of England where she has her dye studio and she does beautiful yarn. And uh, that will be going in the shop soon. I would love your feedback as to whether I am committing heresy by stocking such yarn. <laughs> or if, like me, you like this yarn too and, and you're okay with it. If you want to check out her work, go to Instagram and look up Black Elephant. You guys are really doing well with the notify me when back in stock button that is in the shop. And I really do encourage that you use that if you want something that is out of stock. That way I can um, see what you guys really want me to get back in stock and order it. And then as soon as it goes in the shop, you guys get an email saying this is in the shop. That worked really well with the brusher the brushwork from Blacker in that um, I had put that item up in the shop but it was out of stock. You guys came along, you asked to be notified when it came in stock and I let you guys have the bulk of the stock that you had wanted and you, you guys bought a great amount of it before I even put it on Instagram. And then we finished it up on Instagram. So when you use the notify me when in stock, uh, you will get a little bit of a head start on everybody else knowing that what you want is back in stock. So use that if you want something that's not in stock at that time. Aloe Yarn is in good supply and I know that Emily at Fibertown as well as Sarah of Yarns at Yen Hu are doing giveaways. They're probably done by now. Uh, Let Lopi and Pluto Lopi is also in good supply with more coming. As I mentioned, I'm going to make kits for Melody's uh, shawl that's going to be featured in Len 4. So watch out for kits and hopefully a cal with that. We have Regia 6 ply tweed sock yarn, which is a nice DK weight in stock, as well as Rowan mohair silk. That's that little cloud of fluffiness. Ooh, and I really want to do some strand, you know, holding a strand of mohair with a strand of something else, maybe some black elephant and making something really lovely and fluffy. Books and periodicals, uh, Land 4, uh, we should be able to get to you, I'm hoping around the 25th of February. Shetland by Marie Wallen is still selling well, I still have some in stock. Uh, Carrie Westerman's book, This Thing of Paper, is back in stock. Nancy Marchant's Tuck Stitches is in stock. And I just got um, a new coloring book, which is the Mitten Coloring Book. This is a great book. Um, it has, I think, 12 designs in black and white or in grid form. And then you can do your coloring in and design the, the you know, design how the color work would be yourself. So it's a really fun book and it's doing very well. And coming into the shop soon is Real Shetland Knits. Uh, that's a Jameson and Smith publication with beautiful Shetland patterns in there. So I think that's everything from New Hampshire Knits and the Woolly Thistle for this time. So I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day this week. I hope you're feeling well loved and loving your knitting. And I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Till next time, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry Group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly.